so good evening friends just uh, let me know if i am if you can just see me just give me a heads up if you can see me uh, you can also put a comment in the section if you are live i can read through because i can see the uh, you know youtube over a mobile so i can read all your comments anyone just give me a heads up if i'm live <coughs> i'm waiting so that i can you know get live Just let me know if you can uh, see me, guys. what i will do is i'll disconnect and again try to connect Something problem with the display. Just let me know if you can see. I know you can hear my audio. Yeah. Now I think I, you all can see me. so in this session we are going to talk about fish that is fluorescent in situ hybridization so let's start let's get started with the session actually okay so this session has been sponsored by an academy plus their neat pg stream and uh, an academy you know is one of the you know best online learning platforms not only in neat pg but across all a lot of other categories and uh, in neat pg all the top educators are here live you know teaching structured course which is not only just the live video lecture but it is also supplemented by weekly quiz doubt clearing sessions and a lot of other things now we are going to talk about an academy neat pg plus program in a little while till then let's get started with the you know uh, current uh, session so if you know the correct answer to this question let us see how much do you know already about this thing So what does G stand for in G banding? If you know the answer, just write in the comment. What does G stand for in G banding? Anyone? Okay. Let's look at the next question. What does R stand for in R banding?
so if you know the answer just write on the comment hope you know that you can you know put your comment live what does r stand for in r banding okay let's look at the next question growing cell is required for interface fish true or false simple question growing cell is required for interface fish true or false okay let's look at the next question chromosome painting is an extension of which biotechnological technique it's not painting it's basically painting is a typo here so chromosomal painting is an extension of which biotechnological technique get even okay let's look at the next question protein microarray is used to detect what protein microarray is used to detect what anyone i mean you can comment in the uh, you know answer uh, in the comment section if you know the answer protein microarray is used to detect what okay so we have just seen a few questions so that you understand that why we are you know studying this and what kind of questions can be expected so let's look at cytogenetics and chromosomal analysis now what is cytogenetics cytogenetics is a branch of genetics concerned with chromosome cell interaction okay so it's a branch of genetics which is concerned with chromosome cell interaction like mitosis or meiosis okay now a very important thing which is very frequently asked on uh, cytogenetics is what are the different types of samples which are used for a chromosomal analysis now we can use various samples and each sample will be used on a very specific condition so let's look at that so uh, free for uh, you know uh, amniocentesis can be used for prenatal fetal chromosome okay then blastomere uh, is used when we want to detect pre implantation anomalies detection cvs that is chronic villi sampling is used to detect early uh, you know anomalies okay early anomalies is less than 10 weeks less than 10 weeks whatever anomaly is there that can be detected by cvc that is coronic villus sampling we can also use fetal blood with the help of this technology called as pubs pubs okay pubs that is percutaneous umbilical cord sampling pubs and this is generally done in late second trimester okay so this and finally in adults also if we want to do some cytogenetic uh, studies we use generally cultured uh, skin fibroblast bone marrow and even peripheral lymphocytes so these are various samples which can be used for example the question can be that in adult what can be used for cytogenetic analysis and the options can be cultured skin fibroblast bone marrow peripheral lymphocyte and actually all these three can be used for uh, cytogenetic analysis okay so this uh, what sample is used for various cytogenetic techniques or cytogenetic analysis and when they are used this is a very very important mcq okay now the next thing which is generally asked is the analysis timing so chromosomal analysis is typically din done during the metaphase phase okay or pro metaphase so it is typically done during the metaphase or pro metaphase and why why does it why it is done at generally metaphase or pro metaphase phase is because in this phase the chromosomes are most condensed okay so if they are most condensed they can be easily you know if they will take up dyes or various ea and they will be easily visualized under any microscope so most of the chromosomal analysis are done at metaphase or, or pro metaphase stage now for this to happen the you know dividing cells has to be stopped in their metaphase phase okay so you know that uh, dividing phase uh, cells will undergo a lot of different phases like stationary g1 m g2 you know various phases will be there okay so during the m phase 
the in the cell cycle has to be stopped and for that we use this specific you know chemical colcimate okay we use this specific uh, chemical called as colcimate which is n d acetyl n methyl colchicine which is to arrest the chromosome you know uh, the you know dividing cell into pro metaphase or metaphase state so the timing of chromosomal analysis is metaphase why it is done at metaphase state because in the metaphase state what happens the chromosomes are most condensed and how do we achieve this how do we achieve it is by artificially arresting the cell in metaphase phase by use of this chemical colcimate so all these are again very important one liners okay if you have any doubt if there is any you know uh, doubt you can simply put it in the comment section remember there is a chat box so you can use that to put any yeah. okay now if you see the entire cytogenetic techniques they are they are essentially classified into three buckets one is conventional cytogenetic techniques which are we generally called as banding techniques the second is array based techniques i mean these are cassette array based techniques uh, latest and this has made the cytogenetic techniques very affordable so we are going to read about it in some other lecture but we'll talk about it a little and lastly we have got molecular cytogenetic techniques so if we see conventional conventional is basically around chromosomal banding okay so g band you know r banding all those banding techniques are basically conventional cytogenetic techniques these were the first type of uh, cytogenetic techniques to be used okay so chromosomal banding are those techniques fish we are going to study in this lecture in great detail but we also need to know the array based technique okay so array based techniques are cassette based technique we have a separate lecture on this okay which we are already uh, which i have already taken in the plus course these array based techniques are again divided into three that is cgh comparative genomic hybridization microarrays and single nucleotide polymorphism so again these are very very important techniques a lot of conceptual question are asked on that and this we have covered in our plus courses so now we will look a little about conventional banding and from there we will move to the molecular that is fish technology and we will see various type of fish and various modifications of fish is it clear so let's look at conventional banding so this is a banding technique of metaphase chromosome okay which is easily recognizable and ideal for karyotyping so there are basically four types of banding technique g banding r banding c binding and q banding now essentially what happens is we take a cell so the basic process of all these banding techniques are almost same okay so we take a cell okay and that cell we culture okay now this culture you know because we have seen that uh, uh, all these banding technique requires chrome you know the cell to be in metaphase state so when the cell is cult being cultured there we add this colcimate okay and as and d acetyl col uh, colchicine okay there we add it so the cells are arrested in the cells are arrested in you know metaphase state okay metaphase state now we have to now we have to now what we have to do is add some dye but before we add some dye we pre treat the cells with some chemical okay pre treat the cells with some chemical okay why do we you know pre treat the cell with some chemical is so that the chromosome can take the the dye when we are you know putting the dye onto the culture okay so that's why we need to pre treat the cell and this pre treatment is very very important because the different chemical which we use for pre treatment will be determining what kind of dye it will pick okay once we have pre treated it with the chemical then we use some dye okay now this dye can be you know uh, uh, we will see that based on this dye technique we have separately and once we dye it then we look it under microscope microscope can be simple microscope or even fluorescent microscope so this is the basic technique of you know banding technique so we have the cell we culture it then we use chemical to arrest that cell culture into metaphase state then we pre treat those those cells by some chemical and then we put the dye okay and then once we put the dye then we look it under microscope so let's look at the first technique that is gimsa binding or g binding this is also called as trypsin gimsa binding okay trypsin gimsa binding now now you would have realized that g stands for gimsa okay because gimsa is the dye now here as i told you that before we put the dye we generally treat it with some chemical so that the dye can be picked up easily so here in this case in gym, um, g binding that particular chemical is trypsin 
that is why it is also called as trypsin gymsa banding the stain is gymsa okay and it is seen under light microscope and what do we see is typically dark and light light bands so if this is a chromosome they will be alternate dark and light bands okay now the dark uh, you know areas correspond to g rich segment or gc rich segment wherever guanosine and cytosine is uh, guanine and cytosine is a rich segment there they will have dark okay and the light will be gc poor segment okay so wherever gc is not there there we will have light bands okay and this is the most common banding technique so is is everybody cl clear about g banding okay now let's look at r banding r is basically reverse of g banding so that is why now you would have guessed what does this r stand for this r stands for reverse okay so what it is it's basically reverse of g banding so reverse is what is happening is in g banding okay suppose this area was dark this area was dark in r banding okay this whatever was dark will be light and whatever was light will be dark so it's the what kind of pattern we see is exactly opposite to the z, uh, z binding okay and why does that difference happen because here we were treating it with trypsin here we are pre tripting treating it with acridine orange okay the dye is same the microscope is same but just because we have pre treated that particular chromosome with a different you know pre treating agent we are having a reverse binding okay and here again the light will correspond to gc rich segment which is reversed in this okay and its special use is to detect arrangement in terminal chromosomes okay because uh, terminal chromosomes will be you know uh, uh, colored dark with this particular technique here the terminal chromosomes are generally uh, colored uh, light with this technique okay so this is the second binding technique the third binding technique will be c binding okay so this is also called as centromeric uh, binding technique and here uh, the stain remains the same but here it is pre treated by an acid alkali you know uh, mixture okay again microscope is same but what happens is it generally will uh, kind of uh, uh, stain the centromeric and heterochromatic regions and so it is important for a study of centromeric and chromosomal translocation so this is another c binding cytogenetic technique let's look at q binding now here in q binding q stands for quinacrine okay and it is very similar to g binding but here both you know the uh, you know the treating agent and the stain and the microscope all three are different so here it is treated by barium hydroxide the stain is quinacrine mustard and uh, it's a fluorescent microscope we see and here we see fluorescent band so dark uh, fluorescent bands are basically constitutive and light are heterochromatic okay so these are various banding techniques so if we have to see you know in actuality how this banding technique uh, looks so this is a g banding technique okay so you can see alternate dark and light segment and dark segment is gc rich segment guanine and cytosine rich segment okay because g g pairs with c so wherever g will be there there will be c also okay r you know banding for the same chromosome here you can see because this was dark here it will be light okay so it is reverse of g banding exactly reverse of g banding here c banding again uh, because it has been treated with a difficult different chemical here only centromere and you know uh, actively transcripting sites those are what will be you know colored dark okay so obviously what is are the disadvantages of conventional banding because the main disadvantage is that uh, you know very huge uh, you know very huge lesions or translocations can be uh, identified by it so deletions which are translocations which are smaller than several million base pairs are not routinely detectable so its sensitivity is very very low okay and chromosomal abnormality with indistinct or novel binding patterns are also very very difficult to uh, detect so its even specificity is very low okay and the last disadvantage is it is not possible in autopsy or prefixed tumor material so a dividing cell is must for this cytogenetic method again a very very important uh, one liner you know they you cannot do a banding technique in autopsy or prefix tumor okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages so once we have understood now we are in a position to understand fish that is for uh, fluorescent in situ uh, hybridization so here 
it is basically detection of specific genetic information in morphologically intact cell using fluorescent probe okay so we are looking for specific genetic information in morphologically intact cell using fluorescent probe so again important here is it is done in morphologically intact cell or chromosome okay and uh, so what is the principle let's talk about the principle the principle so if we want to understand the principle you have to look in the word itself so first is fluorescent so we are talking about some fluorescent probe in situ in situ means inside intact cell and hybridization hybridization is basically you know dna base pairing dna base pairing we know that a uh, pairs with t and g pairs with c so this is the you know basic so what happens we create a probe which has a complementary sequence to the dna which we want to identify so let's say we want to identify this particular dna which has a sequence of a t t a t c c g let's say we we are looking for this particular sequence uh, in a in in a chromosome sample so we can design a probe so the probe we can design that probe will have exactly the complementary sequence a t t uh, a uh, t a g g c so now what happens this has complementary sequence with this so if this sequence is present this probe will go and attach itself to here or pair with it and because this probe is uh, tagged with fluorescent dye so if it gets attached here we can identify it under fluorescent microscope so this is the principle of fluorescent in situ hybridization is it clear to everybody okay now let's exactly look at the uh, yeah. so where there is a probe dna now i already told you that this probe dna is designed this probe dna is designed based on based on the target dna which we want to identify the target dna which we want to identify so what happens this probe dna now once we have the probe dna okay we label it we label it with the fluorescent dye so this is what we get now this probe dna this probe dna which was which is showed by blue once it is uh, ta uh, you know labeled with fluorescent dye what happens it becomes red it is shown in red then what we do is we denature the sample so what will happen in denaturation both the two strand will separate and and this probe will also separate and then what will happen if there is a exact complementary sequence what it will do it will go and hybridize and once it gets hybridized we can easily detect it under fluorescent microscopy so this is the basic principle of uh, fluorescent in situ hybridization okay so this is what is going to happen so what are the advantages and disadvantages so we know the advantages the termination of uh, term, uh, you know uh, the major advantages is determination of of number and location of specific dna sequences in human cell it is performed on metaphase chromosome mainly but it can be also done on non dividing cells so it's a very major advantage because it can be done in non dividing cells also and uh, fish which is done in non dividing cells is also called as interphase fish or nuclear fish remember it so fish uh, can is generally done in dividing cells but it can be done also on non dividing cells and if it is done on non dividing cells it is called as interphase fish or nuclear fish fish nuclear fish very very important question so what are the disadvantages of fish so disadvantages that it requires a pre selection of information molecular probe to analysis which means that you have to have a prior knowledge of what kind of genetic defect you are going to or you know gene which you are going to tag because based on the knowledge you are going to design a probe so until unless you know the uh, you know sequence of gene in that particular way you will not be able to design your probe so it requires a pre selection of information molecular probe prior to analysis so prior no knowledge of anomaly is needed okay what are the you know applications in use so it helps in detection of numeric chromosomal anomalies it helps in very very subtle micro deletions uh, complex translocation can also be you know analyzed and it is very helpful in gene amplification analysis so what happens a particular gene if it is amplified will have more fluorescence okay and mapping of newly isolated genes to interest of their uh, chromosomal loci can also be done using fish okay what is interphase fish interphase fish is a technique performed on non dividing cells okay 
and remember fish is normally done on metaphase chromosome but this uh, interphase fish is done in even non dividing cells okay now what are the advantages of interphase fish first of all here growing cells is not required okay and culture is not required so because we need not culture the cells it's a much rapid method and also it is higher sensitive also than normal metaphase fish and commonly in prenatal samples or tumors or hematological malignancies we generally use interphase fish okay so interphase fish is a very very important high yield topic the last then there are some modifications there are two major modifications of fish which you need to know one is chromosomal painting so what happens here is this is an extension of fish and here the probes are fluorescent probes are prepared for the entire chromosome so different chromosomes are identified by different fluorescently labeled probes so here you can see that uh, you know all the chromosomes are colored with different probes and you have to understand that all the chromosomes may have more than one color here okay and so simultaneously detection of multiple chromosomes is possible and uh, obviously because we are trying to you know use a lot of different fluorescent probes so here the limited availability of fluorescent dye is a major limitation here another important you know modification is multicolor fish or spectral karyotyping okay so here if you see again it's a modification of fish and probe again is prepared for the entire chromosome but here a combination of five fluorochromes is used okay so here if you see and based on image based question it can be asked here if you see the entire uh, any chromosome is with that specific color only okay remember it okay so 23 distinct mixtures of five fluoro creates a unique color for each chromosome okay so you know uh, this is uh, how so by appropriate comp computer generated signals the entire human genome can be visualized so this is about multicolor or spectral karyotyping okay so this is the various uh, uh, the basis of fish technology what are the various very uh, modifications and how because sometimes student will uh, you know confuse between what is spectral karyotyping and what is g banding and that kind of conventional karyotyping so i have covered everything and uh, so this brings us to the end of the lecture and uh, let me talk about an academy an academy if you see uh, the plus course here we are able to you know give you information on very specific topics but if you uh, under the plus subscription what happens is we are able to you know teach you in a very very and structured way so the entire like say i take biochemistry there so in the entire biochemistry is you know very nicely arranged into chapters and various modules and each is a live class live class means there is a lot more opportunity for you to interact and suppose if you don't understand anything immediately you you know put it in the chat box and there we tend to reply it plus there is a lot of question answer which is happening in live classes okay so it's the live classes are better than actually physical classes because you don't have to travel and if you, even if you miss it you can see the recorded sessions and uh, even if you want to revise you can see the recorded sessions later plus because there is no social pressure nobody is seeing you you interact a lot also in a physical class you find it very difficult to ask question but in a in this on this you an academy platform you can easy, you know student feel more comfortable asking questions if they don't understand it okay so that live plus classes are very very you know it involves a much deeper learning than just seeing pre recorded videos this is what i want to say also this uh, plus subscription gives you an access to complete test series now let me talk about test series in the test series there is a there is a complete image based question uh, test every month so almost uh, every month we have got image based test okay image based test plus what happens is uh, you know aims pattern test i remember uh, for the may session almost four aims pattern new aims pattern test is there for november session again four aims pattern test is there neat pg pattern test full length test grand test i mean complete test series is there and the most important part about uh, uh, plus subscription is there are exclusive doubt clearing session so if you have any doubt you know because uh, pg preparation uh, involves you know you read from so many sources and you may have your own doubts so this is a unique platform which gives you an access to us in real time where you can discuss uh, all your doubts so how do you actually learn so you go to the uh, play store or app store and search for an academy learning app once you get the app you install it okay and uh, 
the plus subscription what happens is so there are various subscriptions if you are just wanting to try it out you can go for a one month subscription or three month subscription if you are focusing on the aims if you are a foundation uh, student then you know you will be wanting to go for a 12 month subscription or if you are a second third year student you might want to go for a 24 month subscription the price is as low as 1600 or 2000 rupees a month and remember i mean with this what you are having is access to uh, what you are having is access to complete all the 20 educators and all and uh, if you are planning to upgrade if you are planning to upgrade use this referral code dr abhishek hyphen yt yt is for youtube so that i can know that you know uh, you have seen this youtube lecture and you are planning to join it so use this code dr dr abhishek hyphen yt and you will get some 10 percent discount or whatever that offer current offer is there based on that you can get some discount Okay, so this is here. Any questions on fish or any technology, anything, anything which you want to ask? Or shall I close the session? Okay, so even if you have any questions, you can put it in the comment and I'll check it and I'll try to answer it. Thank you guys for being there.